Though they may not look like us, regular shows Mordecai and Rigby sure do behave a lot like us humans. I mean, since the characters in regular show are fantastical in appearance and appearance only, it's easy for the show's creators to put in a lot of references to real life human stuff and the pretty close to real life human world that they inhabit. Hi everyone, I'm a really scruffy Justin with Channel Frederator and today we're talking about references in regular show. From beloved TV shows to basically everything that happened in the 80s, let's go. <laughs> Retro Video Games Regular show creator J.G. Quintel loved video games so much as a kid, he almost chose a career as a game designer over a career in animation. Ultimately, his love for shows like The Simpsons won out just a little bit over his love for virtual worlds. It's no surprise then that Regular Show is full of references to retro video games that he probably played as a child. In the Season 2 episode High Score, for example, Mordecai and Rigby attempt to set a world record on an arcade game called Broken Bones, featuring 8-bit motorbikers mostly just getting into some pretty bad wipeouts on a long dirt road. This game very closely resembles the 1985 NES game Excitebike, which is not only similar visually, but depicts its characters getting into some pretty gnarly accidents that would definitely break bones in real life. The nostalgia goes even deeper. At the start of the season 1 episode Death Punchies, Mordecai and Rigby pop a game called Did Champs into a console that happens to look a whole lot like a Sega Master System. While Sega consoles have since become a footnote in the long and bloody console wars, back in the 80s, Sega was at a close second to the reigning champs at Nintendo. And we have to mention some of our close seconds and thirds and fourths, honorable mentions if you will. Other regular show episodes include references to the failed Nintendo Power Glove controller, the beat-em-up arcade game Double Dragon, classic fighting game Street Fighter, and Nintendo's racing franchise F-Zero, which inspired the setting for most of the Season 8 episode, The Space Race. I think it's safe to say that with this much knowledge, Quintel would've made an awesome game designer. Classic Movies Regular Show sure likes to reference the classics. Not only are its video game references retro, but its movie references tend to call back to some of the more memorable films from the 80s and 90s over the mostly superhero driven hits of today. Season 6's Gamers Never Say Die, an episode full of far too many video game references to jump into within the confines of this video, is an homage to the 1985 film The Goonies. Starting with its title, which is a reference to the Goonies motto, Goonies Never Say Die. From its epic soundtrack to a trap-filled underground cave hiding a secret treasure, not gold in this case, but golden video game badges, the episode takes a lot of cues from the classic adventure movie that you definitely remember if you're an 80s kid. The Lunch Club in Season 7 is another episode that's an homage to a classic film, in this case, John Hughes' 1985 teen classic, The Breakfast Club. Am I imagining things, or do regular show's creators really like the year 1985? Obviously the title is similar, as well as the plot, pitting Benson and Rigby against each other before they team up and have some fun at the expense of assistant principal stand-in, Mr. Mallard. In the episode's final scene, Benson and Rigby read a letter they wrote together over a song that sounds a whole lot like the 1985 song, Don't You Forget About Me, which scores the classic essay narration scene that concludes The Breakfast Club. There's even an entire episode about retro video formats. In Season 6's Format Wars 2, which begins with Mordecai and Rigby and friends renting a laser disc, before meeting up with some robotic personifications of other outdated 80s technologies, like cassettes and reel-to-reel -reel film projection, before joining with Team DVD to take down internet streaming. These guys are seriously committed to the films of the past. I mean, you know, honestly, who even knows what a laser disc is anymore? This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to regular show movie references. The episode Do Me a Solid features a character similar to Pee Wee Herman in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and the famous DeLorean from Back to the Future pops up in the episode Skips vs. Technology. Can you guess what year both of these movies came out in? Yeah, 1985. Man, it was a good year for movies. 80s music. Remember what I said about regular show and the classics? It's not just classic video games and movies that the show likes to reference, but also classic music as well, starting with its soundtrack. Unlike a lot of cartoons, regular show used licensed songs instead of an original score from time to time, and most of these unsurprisingly are songs that were a big hit in the 80s. A scene in High Score, for example, where Mordecai and Rigby are trying to desperately set a high score in bike injury arcade game Broken Bones, features the song Hangin' Tough by pioneering boy band New Kids on the Block, and a montage and caffeinated concert tickets is set to working for the weekend by Loverboy. In the season 4 episode 150 Piece Kid, Benson has to play an insanely complex drum solo to prove himself to the world, as people tend to do from time to time. In the episode's climax, Benson ends up performing in a large metal contraption suspended over a concert audience, which is strikingly similar to a device used by Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee. Yeah, 
playing drums in a big metal box happens in real life too. This one's a blink and you'll miss it. In Season 3's video game Wizard, Mordecai and Muscle Man compete in a video game tournament to win a device similar to that of the Nintendo Power Glove that we mentioned before. Their first opponents bear a striking resemblance to members of the band Devo, complete with their signature jumpsuits and Energy Dome helmets. Key Devo member Mark Mothersbaugh also happened to compose the score for Regular Show, making this a nice shout out to a musical legend and a member of the show's team. Anime. Whether you're an anime fan or not, it's no secret that the genre is a much bigger deal in Japan than it is in regular old America. Time and time again, Regular Show paid homage to its animated counterparts from the land of the rising sun, referencing popular anime in ways both big and small. Regular Show went really big in its love for anime in the episode Brilliant Century Duck Crisis Special. Its name is basically a take on the broken but epic sounding English used in poorly translated anime titles, and the plot mimics the giant robot anime genre to which there are many nods. Most notably though, the episode features an opening sequence that's a recreation of the opening to influential anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion, even featuring an original Japanese language song and a pretty exact recreation of the visuals in the original show's intro, down to the subliminal messages flashing between scenes, it's actually really impressive. Some of the episodes where characters are wearing costumes, Halloween or not, also take the opportunity to get in some quality anime shoutouts. In the non-Halloween episode See You There, a background character is dressed as a masked biker Selty from Do Ra Ra Ra, and in the episode Terra Tales of the Park 5, Eileen is dressed up as Kiki from the 80s Hayao Mizaki movie Kiki's Delivery Service. Also in the season 3 episode Think Positive, Benson's pent up anger reaching a boiling over point is depicted like Goku going Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball Z, complete with a golden environment destroying aura and an explosive energy attack. Thankfully, the moment lasts for like a few minutes and not like 10 whole episodes. Oh, we love you, Dragon Ball. Viral YouTube videos. If you haven't heard of any of the viral YouTube videos referenced in season two episode Go Viral, leave this video open in another tab while you go and catch up on these funny internet videos that you really should have seen by now. Got it? Good. In this episode, Pops is transported into the actual internet and Mordecai and Rigby follow in order to save him. At one point, they pass through a series of screens in which viral video stars are trapped to relive their moments captured in their videos for the rest of eternity in some sort of twisted 21st century update on the myth of Sisyphus. If you ask me, living in a viral video might be a worse punishment than pushing a boulder up a hill. Though, the latter is a good workout. The viral YouTube stars on the screens include David, the child from David After Dentist, Chris Crocker's distinct face from the very old Leave Britney Alone, Antoine Dodson from the video The Greatest Television Interview Ever, and the techno Viking himself. Do you recognize any of the videos that we didn't mention? Let me know in the comments. Believe it or not, this is just the tip of the iceberg of references to pop culture, mostly from the 80s, in regular show. If you have a favorite reference we left out, be sure to let us know in the comments, and don't forget to click that bell icon to become part of that awesome notification squad as we drop new videos every day of the week. Make sure to check out our past videos and subscribe to Channel Frederator as it is Cartoon Central on the internet and don't ever forget, Frederator loves you. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and follow Channel Frederator for more videos.